I blame my con chair for this mess. Yes. Yeah. She is a Mac person. It's her fault. And this is my. <laughs>
Use the force, Luke. Well, you know, you are a popular person, so I think. Uh, apparently, I am. You deserve the pump. I'm not sure how I ended up being so popular. But, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, it's popular, popular can be. It's making your mark. It's popular can be. Society. Maybe my mom's going to go What are you doing? Just testing the Do I have to get the lead stamp? Oh, it's you forget where you are. You really do. It's my first hurry con. I apologize. I don't know the standard protocol. It's not a standard protocol. Do you have a protocol? Yes. <laughs> 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 Do you have a standard protocol? Yes. Yeah. 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 The protocol is six, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Um, it is time to get a watch, but I have a I have a watch somewhere. Why? Because that means I Somebody, I'm not sure who that is. But it's more dynamic. Look at the dynamics. Let's have a big round of applause for the AV crew who have a famous job and do it marvelously. The Emperor blesses you, AV team. And they accommodate the needs of irrational people like us at a moment's notice. Wait, we're rational? Shh. 
Okay, so let's get started. Um, we'll get to introductions as part of it. And so this is My Little Pony and Bronies 101 for furries. Do we have any furries in the house? No. 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 no, 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 no. Furry. Sean the Unbeliever. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> or as we're liking to call it, OMGWTFBBQ. So why should you be listening to us? I mean, who the hell are we? Why are we qualified to be here? Um, we're not really. We're not really. You have a horn. Looks totally legit. <laughs> <laughs> Magnetic horn. So I'm Sonia, aka Sonia Lynn. I am the convention chair of the Bay Area Brony Spectacular, or BabsCon for short. The very first My Little Pony convention here in the Bay Area, and by the by, sister con to FurCon, because without anthropomorphic arts and education, we would not have gotten off the ground. So big rep. Big round for AAE. Because without them, none of us are here. Okay. Ah, there's our logo. Neat. Yay. Over there we have Rommel Pants. Say hello, Rommel. Hi. This is Mr. Pants. That's Mr. Pants to you. Yes, indeed. And I can verify that he is in fact wearing pants, which is a good thing. Yes. I mean, I could take them off in a moment's notice. Uh, we ready to? Yes. <laughs> Ron was a founding member of the charity Bronies for Good, which does an amazing amount of great work all around the world. Uh, Ron, will say a few words about that. Um, well, yeah. Uh, Bronies for Good started in 2010. We've been operating for three years. Have raised over $250,000 $100, for uh, multiple charities, your siblings, Operation Smile, uh, Cure Social Children's Cancer, and such things. We also organize blood drives and uh, other altruistic events. Awesome sauce. And uh, there is the Bronies for Good logo. Mm -hmm. Very recently redesigned. Over at the far end, we have Miss Sophia Nardinger. Hello. For 20 years standing. That's right, 20 years. She was there back at Conferenz. I'm, I'm a gray muzzle. I don't know how many of you know that term. Yeah. Um, I'll be close to. Yeah, yay, yay, I know you. Wait, there's. Who is that in the front row? I don't. I, I'm, I'm feeling a sense of manliness. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm growing chest hair just being this close to him. <laughs> that's scary. And, uh. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Anyway, she was also a long time Further Confusion staff for many, many years, and yeah, she's currently that. my head of business. Yes, this is going to kind of come off like Babs on the panel, and I apologize, but everyone here does have other reasons for being here, and they have qualifications and stuff, and we didn't just make them up, I swear. We did try to avoid that, but um, Sonia could only find people she knew, and she asked everyone she knew to be on BabsCon. So oh, it's kind of... Yeah, and some people that uh, are here were supposed to be on this panel, so I don't know. We may get crashed. It's gonna be crazy. Where, where's, where's Mike? I have no idea where Mike is. He's is. currently really hungover. <laughs> <laughs> That's a surprise. This somebody, is not a surprise. Yeah, well, <laughs> somebody drag his rapping ass down here. <laughs> Because he's supposed to be here. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. We are being crashed. We've been crashed by the manly Maroni. Okay, before, before, we continue, uh, before we continue our intro event of the rest of us who are actually supposed to be here and, and, uh, and are actually here, um, do you guys know who this is? Do you know, do you know who I am? Yes. Uh, I, yes. You mean Drew? Right. This is Dusty Cat. The manliest brony in the world. Yeah. Tell us a bit about yourself, Jesse, and your brony credentials. Okay, um, first my furry credentials. Oh. Um, I was an original attendee to Conference 3. Um, I've been in the furry fandom since 1989. Um, I've worked this convention since its inception in 1999. Um, <laughs> Derry, do stop standing me up. But anyway, um, I started uh, doing brony stuff it's the just uh, about halfway through season one. 
um, where I did a little comedy video called The Manly's Brony in the World, which was a play on Dostoevsky's most interesting man in the world. Actually, uh, if you hold on for just a second, I have a little something for you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> He is the manliest brony in the world. I don't always watch cartoons with little girls. But when I do, I prefer my little pony. Friendship's magic. hate blogger picked up on this and he twittered to his minions that the bronies must be taking their testosterone lately and linked it and by the end of its fervor it was the first six did you say fervor i did oh i did by the end of its fervor it uh it was the first six pages of search on google and it had made it had made Russian, Japanese, Puerto Rican websites all over the place. I, it was, I was sitting here, my Twitter's blowing up, I had to shut my phone off because I, I just couldn't keep up with it. And it was sort of weird. And I just, I'm going, wow, this is kind of cool. And then I went to Everfree Network and they were having a live Mando Pony show. And I love Mando, I love Mando's music. So as I go in, all of a sudden everyone, oh my, it's Dusty, I was like, Okay. okay. Is it really you? Yes, it's me. Everything. I guess somebody was trying to say they were me and that was me or whatever. But Final Draft, who runs Everfree Network, took me aside another room. Are you really Dusty Cat? I said, Yes, I'm really Dusty Cat. What do I have to prove to you? Uh, send me a phone. And I called him, whatever. And he said, Well, I've been trying to find you. I'm everywhere, man. It's like, you can't, it's not that hard. I want to give you a show. <laughs> What am I gonna do with a show? What do I? It's like whatever you want, as long as you don't piss off Hasbro. You can do whatever you want. It's like, hmm. So I ended up getting Screwball, who was a fan of mine at the time, and I said, "Oh yeah, you want to do the show with me?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, why not?" And uh, so we turned it into a talk show, uh, with a little comedy thrown in, and it's sort of taken off. Uh, it's called Stay Brony, My Friends. And it's on every free network every other Monday with live interviews with people like Megan McCarthy and Lee Tokar and Andrea Lipman and people like that. We we're working on episode 68 coming up. Uh, so it's been going for about two years. Yep. Sophie Cabra, who's in the, art, in the uh, dealer's room right now with our latest guest last Monday. I just uh, finished editing that on Thursday or Friday and now it's up. Uh, but like Dave, Dave Polsky, who was the writer for um, Daring Don't, and some of the other episodes we had Dave Polsky on a couple of weeks ago. Um, we'll have these fine people on the show in a week. Uh, they're going to be our guests uh, next Monday. And then I also have Peter New coming back. This will be a third time on the show um, in April. I mean, excuse me, first week of March. So, and I, now I'm also, if anybody seen yesterday's episode? No. Yet? No. No. So okay, no I, I won't give it away, but almost everybody knows that Snowflake talks. Oh. And he's called Bulk Biceps now. Well, the gentleman who the gentleman who was the voice actor for uh, for Bulk Biceps is actually very known in Vancouver. He actually played on Dragon Ball Z, um, and he has basically said, "I want to come on your show." So we're going to get him pretty soon too. So brand new voice actor on the show. So wait, speaking of Peter New, uh, do you have any idea of his upcoming schedule? His upcoming, you know what? I he told me that he was going to be in the Bay Area on Easter weekend. Really? Yes. You're I'm a very good friend with Peter New. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to come in to BabsCon. He's going to be there. And wait a minute, who was the original voice actor for, for Snowflake? <laughs> um, actually, that would be Jason Thiessen, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be Jason Thiessen. Jason and and I, I, I think... He's also going to be there. <laughs> oh. Yes. Pardon, pardon the shilling, we have to do yes, it. Yes, we're shilling. It's contractually obligated. Yes. If I don't, I get sued by What are you me. doing down there? <laughs> Derpy, will you stop knocking her over? 
Didn't you write that contract? <laughs> wow. It was one it was one heck of a party. <laughs> Damn Pegasi! I just don't know what went wrong. She's the only one left standing. So, uh, so, yeah. so anyway, our show not only does that, but we also do charity work. Every guest that comes on gets to pick their own charity. And so this year we cracked $25,000 in charity across all charities for all of our guests. So if you, if you do enjoy, if you do enjoy uh, helping other people, come on and check out the show. Uh, we do also do have a call-in feature where halfway through the show, you, out in uh, internet land, can actually ask questions through Screwball to our live guest. So if it's somebody that you really enjoy and you want to ask that certain question, like Dave Polsky, why did you write blah, 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 you can come on our show and, and ask the question. And, uh, and sometimes we have to give away some prizes. So uh, come on and check out the show. It's every other Monday on Everfree Network. All right, now that we've been, uh, oh, well, hang on, we're going to get to questions later. We're going to get to questions later. Uh, I do have to get back to, we, I just have a very, very brief little, uh, little slideshow as we were in the middle of, and let's get back to where we were in that. Da, 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 da. So additional uh, introductions, we have Mr. Simon Wolf. Furcon um, regulars should know him because he, uh, for many years, has staffed this con and has been the head of ops on a few occasions. Uh, and he will also be my head of ops because, honestly, I couldn't have picked a better person for the job. So, Simon, tell us a bit about your bona fides. Did you read it? Yeah. Okay. Did you read it? No, no, I didn't. That's my Oh, well. Is this thing on? Anyways, okay, so I was started out in the furry fandom back mm, about 2000, and when I went to uh, Further Confusion, I went and started to staff it uh, by 2001, and I kept that up, working up through the ranks from volunteers all the way into operations, and finally decided to, quote, retire. Uh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> See how well that worked. Uh, just a couple years ago, well, 10 years in, and uh, pursue other interests. And then all of a sudden, we started looking at this strange girls TV show that somebody said was really cool and said that someone like John Delancey was willing to voice to. And that was worth taking a look and finding out that, hey, this is actually pretty well written, pretty well done, pretty well worth watching. And next thing you know, I'm now doing running operations for a brand new pony company. I'm not really sure how that happened. <laughs> but we did you. <coughs> we asked. <laughs> So, okay, now you know who... Yeah, you don't know that word. Uh, so, okay, so that's who we are. Uh, Mike the Microphone was supposed to be here, but he is sleeping it off because, oh God, is he partying like mad in the pony party room. How many of y'all were in there last night? And how many of y'all were in there Friday night? Yeah, yeah. How many of y'all don't remember if you were in there? Yeah, that, that's what I thought. So, okay, for, for those of us in the, in the room who are still a little bit new to the concept, uh, we're just going to breeze through a very, 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 very condensed version of how this whole phenomenon got started. So, who are these bronies? The most simple definition of what a brony is, is an adult fan of the TV show My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic which is the fourth generation of the My Little Pony franchise, going all the way back to the 80s. Uh, but it was this one that caught the public's imagination, and we're going to tell you why. So here's, as I said, a very brief history of My Little Pony Friendship's magic and the, and the beginnings of the brony culture. So the way it goes down, Lauren Faust, who, uh, if you all don't know, is a long-standing luminary of, of American animation, uh, she's famous for uh, writing on Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. So she's at Hasbro pitching them uh, a, a concept of her own called Milky Way and the Galaxy Girls, but they didn't go for it. Instead, they recruit her uh, to pitch, or they recruit her to develop the next generation of My Little Pony because she was a fan of My Little Pony going back to when she was a teenager. And she, of course, is, as I said, is a well-known animation writer with some serious cred. And uh, they were launching a new network called The Hub and wanted a new version of Pony, and their synchronicity happened. Right. 
Next thing you know, out in uh, internet land in 4chan, the slash CO board or cartoon board um, catches wind of this and also catches wind of an article, which actually I'm not going to show, uh, an article called uh, something along the lines of the end of creator driven animation. This is this alarmist piece about, oh my god, if they can recruit someone as good as Lauren Faust for a merchandise-driven show about selling toys, then it can't be any good. And oh my god, the world is ending! It's the worst possible thing the ever! The worst possible thing! <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So the, so the four channers watch this show with intent to, oh my god, surprise, troll this author, but along the way, a funny thing happened. The same people who brought you Anonymous and things Wolf best... Cats. Wolf cats, true, true. <laughs> but also many things best left unmentioned, at least at a family con. <laughs> uh, they watch the show and they end up actually liking it. <gasps> what? <laughs> and the system complained. <laughs> so, next thing you know, there's thread spam and new memes are being born at the speed that only 4chan can generate them. Uh, there was war on 4chan, which, which resulted in the, in the uh, generation of a special slash MLP board for all things pony. And the Digerati start watching the show en masse. And there you have a beginning. Uh, so it starts out with just some early photo memes, like over on 4chan, you know, back during the wars, it was, mods are asleep, post ponies. <laughs> Confound these ponies, they drive me to drink. <laughs> Hate detected. Firing orbital friendship beam. <laughs> the well-known love and tolerate so now that we've all been inducted, I have this to say to all of you. Welcome to the herd. <laughs> very quickly, very quickly, and again, I'm gonna try to keep this as quick as I can. Very quickly, the, the fans start expressing their creativity. They start giving elaborate backstories to ponies only seen for a few seconds on the show. Like, uh, yeah, maybe a certain derpy who? <laughs> With a penchant for muffins and clumsiness and, and a sweetheart. The original shipping couple of My Little Pony. The human obsessed Lyra and the long suffering Bon Bon. We all know this time traveler. Doctor Who's. Anyway, Doctor Who's. Interesting tidbit, at the 50th anniversary special uh, theatrical showings, they were showing a bunch of Doctor Who trivia beforehand, and they mentioned Doctor Who's. Apparently the folks over at the BBC really like him. <laughs> but there were also original characters. Some were based on real life humans, like, uh, that's the Faustacorn. That is Lauren Faust as an alicorn right there, because Lauren Faust. <laughs> And I'm sure we all recognize this girl. DJ Pone 3 and my face cannon! And now probably uh, the last one I'm going to show you uh, at the moment is possibly the most popular original character going at the moment in the fandom. Boom. Hufflepuff! <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, last thing. How many of these people <coughs> <laughs> so how many of these brony people are there? I mean, you know, there can't be that many of them. They're, they're crazy. Well, as of the most recent herd census, which is a, there are many studies now being done on the brony uh, cult community and fandom. According to the most recent herd census, approximately seven to 12.4 million people. Now, would you say that that's a surprising statistic? No. Because, Pinkie Pie would. 
<laughs> and all right, we're gonna leave off the uh, we're gonna leave off the, uh, the 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 slideshow. That's all we had for that. And now we're gonna just we just gonna talk pony. We're gonna talk furry. We're gonna talk for it. <gasps> <laughs> and I'm going to stop monopolizing this damn panel and let folks start talking. It's like you run a convention or something. Uh, some idiot told me to do it. Uh, who, who did? Oh God, it was me. <laughs> I told you not to listen to the voices in your head. Yes. So, what we do want to talk about, though, is the intersection between bronies and furries and how these two communities work together. Maybe some of the, uh, uh, yeah, see, see? <laughs> oh, here. Ah! It's a dog in three yes. forms. <laughs> Amazingly enough, this pretty much brought Brony and Furry back together. Because back when it first started, we were at war. Mm -hmm. We were at war, pretty much. Because I'm a long time fur. And I saw MLP as just another extension of it. Because basically it is, it's, it's a furry show, yeah. okay? And, and, and anthropomorphics in its base form is giving human attributes to things that are not human. Look at uh, Evan Dorkin's Milk and Cheese, car comic, which is basically anthropomorphic wedge of cheese and a carton of milk, okay? It's the same thing. So as a fan of anthropomorphics, that's anthropomorphics to me. Okay, but a lot of my friends and a lot of furries found its acceptance to be almost maddening. Where, as furry fandom has been uh, going on for 25, 30 years and still reviled in some, in some aspects, um, they, I think that they were a little jealous of how easy MLP got its fame. And uh, they were basically uh, angry about it. So, oh, we can't have those bronies in our fandom. We can't have them. They aren't us. And the bronies took that as... Yeah. And the bronies took that as, oh, well, we're in a fight, I guess. And, and the 4chaners could take back and forth. And it was just lobbying stuff back and forth and back and forth. And then all of a sudden, Sophie Cabra started making these. And I think she was the first one to actually make a fursuit of, I think it was um, Rainbow Dash and Applejack. And they showed up at Dragon Con and, an, and at Anthrocon and were absolutely loved and adored. And it sort of broke the walls down that if the creation, the creativity of bronies can bring that to the furry fandom, what the heck are we fighting for? Really? And then more and more people started doing more, more art and started going to furry fandom. Oh, shut up. <laughs> going to furry fandoms and showing their artwork. In fact, last year there was more, there was a lot of really good brony stuff, pins and badges and t-shirts and things here that were, weren't the year before, and there's more this year. So I think now that the years have gone by that we're starting to actually, you know, kumbaya a little bit. So um, I, happen to, I happen to enjoy that we can all, you know, play in the same yard again. So I have a question uh, to the, our panelists who uh, were longtime furries. So uh, Dusty, Simon, Sofiana, uh, could you tell us all a little bit about, as a longtime fur, how did you wander into the Brony fandom as well? Oh, me again. Well, I, I kind of alluded to this. Um, he, uh, as you know, hanging out at FC, you can see a lot of cool things and a lot of things that you're not really too sure about. But it really came down to a housemate who's actually here today, but I don't know if um, saying that, hey, you should see this cool show. And I said, it's a cool show for little girls, maybe. I saw the ones in the 80s. <laughs> no. Okay. He then expressed that John Delancey, who we all know as Q from Star Trek, uh, voiced it. And I thought, well, there's got to be something to it if they're willing to get him to do that. So that's why I decided to probe it. So I thought, well, this is kind of cool. I'll start watching this. Then I came to FC again, and all of a sudden, everybody had little badges like this on. We had the first suit, like, I don't know where it went. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, 
there might be something to this. I wonder what that could be. And, and that kind of led in down the trail of, of broniness. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, how about you? Well, my, my story is uh, very similar to uh, Smiling Wolf or R.F. Tinker's, uh, depending on how you know him. I know him both ways. Um, I was a furry for 20 years. I joined furry fandom actually before the 90s, but my first convention wasn't until 94. Um, but I've been doing and drawing anthropomorphic critters since uh, 88 or so. Um, and about four years ago, my life took a couple of turns and I decided that uh, I wasn't really connecting with the furry community at the time. And uh, so I pulled back and re-examined my life. And about a two and a half years ago, my boyfriend comes to me and says, I have the show you have to watch. Okay. It's My Little Pony. No. <laughs> I'm not watching that. I know the series. <clears throat> I'm not watching that 80s show. It's horrible. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. You watch the first five episodes. If you don't like them, never again. Okay, fine. Whatever. Watch the first two episodes. Next night, watch the next two episodes. By the third evening, which was a Wednesday, I was in season two. <laughs> <laughs> And here I am now, uh, head of business for BabsCon, and after saying I'd never work another con again. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's how I got into this thing. For me, um, it was basically it was a life-changing event. Um, it's, not, it's difficult to say that, but when you look back on it, when the economy crashed, um, I'm a mechanic for a living. I'm a Harley-Davidson technician. Manly. And guys like me, <laughs> the jobs dried up really fast. When in, in the tech sector, you know, this was all tech in this area. So when people didn't have money, they didn't have motorcycles, they didn't have parts, they didn't have anything. So I was let go from my job. And I was uh, bouncing around until I basically had nothing. I had maybe 200 bucks in the bank and I had a $400 truck payment and I had nothing. So a friend of mine who owned a business in Nevada said, come over and work for me. I'll put you up on a house that I'm trying to sell until you get on your feet, and you can work for me and build bikes and, and parts and things like that. I said, okay, fine. So I packed all my stuff up, and I went to Nevada, and I was miserable. All I did was live in a house that was trying to be sold. I had a room, a garage. I didn't even set up in the kitchen. I was basically living like a hermit. And I would go to work every day, and I, yes, I build custom motorcycles, and I do some of that stuff, which is fun for me, but I'd go home to nothing. I go home to an empty house. And in the wintertime in Nevada, it's terrible. It's dark, it's depressing, it's everything. So I would drive or ride my motorcycle back and forth to San Jose to see my friends once a month. And we'd do an Advanced Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Everybody just played that, it's awesome. So at the end of one of our sessions, a friend of mine says, you have to watch this show. What is it? This is one in the morning, right? It's My Little Pony. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm no, you have to watch this. Really? Yes. Well, okay. So we sit down and we watch season one premiere, part one and two. I went, well, that's kind of cool. Is there any more? <laughs> And we sat and we watched all the way, we watched all morning. We, we didn't go to bed till whenever, but when Rarity throws herself back on her bed and goes, I don't even know what to wallow in, I'm so pathetic. <laughs> I'm <laughs> done, hooked, forget it. I'm taking a nap and watching more. <laughs> So sure enough, we watched everything that, that, that happened, and then I was introduced to EQD, and then I was introduced to this, and I was introduced to that. And I went back to Nevada with the thought in my head that I don't have to do that. I don't have to scrape in all that crud for a couple of bucks, because I, have, I can do what I want to do. I don't have to do that. I was living somebody else's dream. So I packed all my stuff back up, and I came back to San Jose. 
and I made it work. I know I now sell parts over a counter, but it gets me enough money to live so that I can do the things that I want to do, like the show and the charity and entertaining people, because that's what gives me joy. That's what makes me happy. Seeing you guys smile or laugh when I do something like I just did gives me the warm fuzzies. It makes me feel great that I can entertain you people and do good things for people. Now, if I could figure out how to make that a living, I'd be set. Now, that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do, because the show told me it's possible. Now, Dusty actually brought up a very important point uh, during his, his talk just then, and uh, one thing that I think is a very strong commonality between the furry fandom and the brony fandom is an emphasis on charity. I mean, any show that has as its subtitle, Friendship is Magic, is, is, you know, and has a pony that ap absolutely represents generosity, um, it's part of what we do. Um, and we actually have um, one of the founding members of one of the biggest brony charities sitting right here at our table, and I'd like him to, uh, to just talk a little bit about the history of, of, of charity <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the brony community, not just bronies for good. But you, can, you can tempt that, it's cool. Uh, and uh, you know, just, just you know, talk about uh, how the lessons of the show have, uh, <laughs> have made bronies do so much good. Rommel, go for it, man. Thank you, Sonia. I really appreciate the uh, lovely introduction. Um, I did have a quick counter question before I started on my thing. Should I at least tell them how I became a brony? Please do. Okay, so unlike, <laughs> unlike the rest of our uh, lovely panelists here, I was not a, a furry prior to uh, getting into the uh, show. Neither was I really a fan of anything. I mean, I was a... Um, Hard-working, dubious student scholar over at uh, California State University, Monterey Bay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony. Um, yes, yeah, so I was there taking 24 units worth of classes, and let me give you an idea of just how many uh, classes that is. That is seven classes of full-time social theory heavy classes where you're reading about 450 pages of dense social theory, you know, like Das Kapital and Marxist theory each week. So my life was pretty uh, monotonous, needless to say. So, <laughs> so when I finally gotten off, uh, off of school and figured out, oh, I swore off ever taking that many units of classes again and not having a life, um, I was basically uh, playing a little bit of Team Fortress 2 and I started noticing people having these pony icons. I'm like, what's going on here? There's something, there's something to this. So I asked somebody about them, and they're like, oh yeah, there's a show called My Little Pony French of Magic. You should check it out. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I kind of uh, got bored because I didn't really have anything else to do, and I decided to look it up. And I went to that, uh, to that website, uh, Know Your Meme, and I started to do a little bit of research on it. I read the, uh, the article in the uh, Creative Driven Era and Animation, and I uh, did more research looking into the different memes and other things, and I was like, well, okay, there is this very vibrant subculture here, and there's obviously some sort of principal catalyst that's responsible for creating it. I think this means that I need to watch the show. So, after uh, a little bit of initial hesitation and a uh, little bit of uh, a drink to coax me into watching it, <laughs> I started off on it. And after the uh, second episode where um, Nightmare Moon was introduced, I was like, interesting. I would not have expected this kind of a turn. So I kept watching, and I was like, wow, that's really girly, but awesome. <laughs> I'm going to keep watching. So I sat there on the floor with my laptop, and I watched all the way up to season, yeah, all the way through season one, because it was, season two hadn't started yet when I first got into it. And I was like, whoa, my gosh, this is amazing. I need to find out more about this pony stuff. And so then, of course, I discovered EQD. I went off and found all of the varying uh, news sites and things and started keeping up on it. I read fan fiction and all that fun stuff. And I, you know, as you can see by the Luna plushie, I 
I, I hate OBGYNs. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired, get out. <laughs> it keeps happening. Who is drunk? Too much cider. Too much cider oh. for Luna. Too much, oh. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Dusty. Thank you. She, she still has the lay on from the party last night, so that might tell us something. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Too much cider. Oh, yeah. Plenty of cider. Either way. So, I ended up um, uh, finishing it. And then, I wanted to find a way to get involved. Because one of the things I'm, I do outside of, um, um, you know, outside of my scholarly work and outside of uh, pony stuff, I uh, have been involved in a number of uh, you know political movements and things, movements for economic justice, political justice, and all such things. You know. <laughs> um, so I uh, I was you know was active on campus, trying to stop tuition hikes and all these budget cuts that were making furloughs and crazy things. And you know I wanted to see if I could find a way to kind of transplant that activism that I'm into into the fandom. And I eventually ended up on Pony Chan. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> nah, it wasn't that bad. Nah, it's a good place. But, um... <laughs> it's not... <laughs> You're just tormenting me throughout this whole panel. Yes. You're fun to torment me and me. Okay, so I went there, and then I found this, uh, this board called Collab. And then on this board, there was a thread. And the thread said, um... How can we as bronies give back? And then I was reading through it, and I saw all of these uh, posts saying, "Oh, we should, you know, give them, raise money for charity. We should go and, you know, uh, do blood drives, do beach cleanup, and such things." And I'm like, "Okay, obviously there are a lot of people here with a lot of ideas, but there's no central focus." So what I I posted on there anonymously and said, "Hey, you know, I'm this guy. I've done organizing before. I know how to get things started." Twilight. But, yes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> You know, she's only sitting there. <laughs> there. Uh, anyway, so I got together, yeah, kind of got it started, and in a tiny chat room, <laughs> in an online tiny chat room, we began talking about different ideas of what to do. And I decided to say, look, why don't we go ahead and start a group? And then with that group, we can kind of begin setting what kind of principles we want to have and how we want to go about doing our doing this kind of uh, good in the world. And we finally settled on Bronies for Good. And I don't want to tell you what some of the other name suggestions were because they're just god awful. <laughs> the worst. What? The worst what was the worst? Friend Fun Good Pals. Yeah. It was um, uh, ponies, uh, doing pony good was one of them, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> That's not catchy at all. <laughs> I think at a furry convention that has a whole other meaning. Exactly. Yep. 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 <laughs> Basically. But anyway. <laughs> so we started that, and we set our uh, mission statement and our founding principles about, you know, first we didn't want to register as a nonprofit immediately because we wanted to put all of our focus and all of our energy into just doing good. We didn't want to go through the whole process as if we had this group we fully consolidated with just a random bunch of online random people. The second thing that we set was that we wanted to be um, orientated towards different types of causes, not just focusing on raising money for a single organization or a single group. We wanted to be um, multiple who wanted to be responsive to people who wanted to be involved. And the last thing was that we wanted to be tied to, the, we wanted to be intimately tied to the community and be a part of that community and ensuring that, you know, what we're doing isn't something that we do out of our own self-interest. And after that initial onset, we got started and we did our first blood drive, our first event, which was uh, Nurse Red Hearts Roundup, uh, where we, it was in September of 2010, and we raised about, uh, I want to say, 17 liters of blood for that first run, which is a good start. We were, we were happy to go there, but after that we were kind of feeling a little bit lost on exactly what to do. And after some internal discussion, a fellow uh, from uh, this uh, MLP, <coughs> goodness, what is it called? Uh, MLP Music, it was a, like MLP Music Group, and so they, he came to us. Music no, it wasn't Music Questria, it was a website. Uh, yeah. The name. That's embarrassing, but anyway, they came to us and they said, "We want to do a, a charity music album. Will you guys help?" And that's when 
things really started to get interesting because we started to see collaborations between musicians. We started to see collaborations between members of the fandom with the Pony Media and such as this, you know, this word of this project began to uh, to spread. And eventually, what came out was a 27-track album called Smile. And that uh, that album was set for the uh, Children's Cancer Association. We figured, you know what? We don't know what the response to this is going to be. We don't know if it's going to be successful. A lot of us had doubts going into it, but you know, we went for it. And within the span of a month, we had twenty-seven thousand dollars raised for the Children's Cancer Association. And it was just absolutely phenomenal. I was blown away, <laughs> completely and utterly blown away. And after that, another person. Uh, came to us and he said, hey, I, I'm a co-chair for this international development organization based out of Germany called Your Siblings. I saw what would happen with, uh, with uh, Smile and it was amazing and can we do the same? And I'm like, well, okay, let's do it. So we went ahead and this time we did a second album called Seeds of Kindness, which is a, a name that you may know if you follow us at all. Uh, ended up being a 41 track album and then that album not only did it raise money itself, but it also brought me more into the community because then I, I started meeting people who did shows, you know, Apple Cider and Chef Sandy with Ron Bronyville was one of the first things, public appearances that I did. And then from there, you know, I started meeting people from different conventions, I started meeting people from different media outlets, and I just, you know, slowly and slowly began to have this whole fandom thing turn into a massive time sink that was even diverting away from my studies. But you know what? It was well worth it because ponies. 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 So, uh, Rommel, uh, can, you, can you also speak to some of the other charitable activities going on in the community? Yes, absolutely. Um, so, we weren't actually the only ones doing the, this kind of charity work, obviously. Um, there was a, uh, another, uh, another group that actually ended up becoming a, a nonprofit after it was the Brony Thank You Fund. Initially, it was a Brony Thank You ad, which was a uh, commercial that was started for Brony, basically saying, hey, here we are, we're Bronies, we want to give thanks to the creators for giving us this really awesome show. And, after they had raised their uh, amount of money, they had some left over and they thought, hey, let's start a nonprofit. So they ended up uh, founding the uh, Brony Thank You Fund and have um, uh, recently completed one of their first major projects, which is the Derpy Hoove Scholarship, which is a $50,000 scholarship for Cal Arts. To basically give to uh, prospective students uh, going in wanting to get into cartooning or, or drawing or graphics design. So it's a really, really cool uh, project they managed to do. And, um, they've also uh, been, we've also collaborated with them on multiple occasions on uh, Relief for Typhoon Hyphen was a Ohio, excuse me, from the, from the Philippines uh, did that. And I know that um, we've done different uh, collaborations with other fandom folks, um, helping out people who are either in dire straits. There was a one time uh, where we raised $2,000 for this um, a woman by the, uh, who was a, a mother of one of the people who did uh, Ponycraft. And, uh, we got her an oxygen machine. And that's actually, nice. the person that I met through that actually ended up buying me this plushie because he was so thankful. Oh. And he was like, and I was just like, you know, <laughs> all the feels. <laughs> all the feels. So uh, what, what about, you? Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the, uh, the, the beautiful, beautiful campaign for poor, poor Kiki and Ah, uh, yes. Um, so Kiki and Mia Harvey, um, there was a child by the name of Kiki and she had a, um, I, think, I believe it was a, a brain tumor, or was it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it was a brain tumor, yeah. So, um, and this was, of course, a really just debilitating, terrible brain tumor that basically rendered her um, in a state of paralysis for much of the time. But um, there, it, it, it's essentially caught up as this, um, as the father basically appealing to the family and saying, hey, I have this kid, she's in this condition, but we're trying to find different ways to be able to treat her, you know, going the traditional route and then going non-traditional route. And, through that, that, that whole campaign kind of became a really essential part of the fandom because Kiki and, uh, and became this like rallying cry for uh, rallying rallying cry, excuse me, for people to raise money for her and to, to help her to like steer through her condition to hopefully recover to the point to where she would be able to enjoy the show in the same equal capacity that we would all be able to. And the campaign ended up raising well over I think seventy thousand US dollars. Yeah, the, the Tara Strong, who voices Charlie Sparkle on the show and is commonly referred to as the Queen of the Bronies, uh, really focused a lot of attention on Kiki. And yeah. while Kiki did unfortunately eventually succumb to her, her ailment, uh, my understanding is that on that final day, Tara Strong was there to sing to her. Oh. Yeah, so as you can see, 
this, this element of, of, of giving, of generosity, of kindness, and of, you know, trying to be good to others as, you know, others would be good to you, is, is really something that's a powerful um, uniting force in our family, and something that personally has been this, 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 <laughs> this force that has just kept me going each day, like uh, knowing that even when I'm, when, I, when I'm at a convention, somebody walks up to me and say, hey, yeah, um, I, ran, I run Burning Tree Good, and they say, you know what, thank you for doing that. Thank you for being that person to, to do that and to you know, work to actually take the show's values and those, and those, um, those elements of, of kindness and generosity and really applying them towards um, positive, positive social action in the world. And it's, it's, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to do that. And I, to this day, hope that one day I'm able to do this professionally. Um, and I'm trying to gear my studies towards that end. Ramo Pants, everybody. Ramo Pants. And that's the kind of, that is the kind of thing that this fandom inspires, much like the furry fandom. I know that over the years, uh, further confusion in anthropomorphic arts and education have raised scads of money for a variety of wonderful causes. Um, but Ramo, would you say, Ramo? Would you, would, you, would you say that uh, since good feelings toward other people has a certain power to it, that perhaps friendship is... Which friend? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Friendship is magic. <laughs> exactly, friendship is magic. Well, um, moving right along, uh, one thing that has also been a hallmark of both communities is an astonishing array of creative endeavors. There has been an outpouring of creativity from the fans, and over in the Brony community, that's expressed itself in, <laughs> this way. in every way possible, from fursuits the, the to... Thing about, the thing about the Brony community that I find <laughs> in, in a creativity that I don't find Pardon? in furry fandom is in music. The Brony fandom has scads of people that are pretty much professional musicians that are remixing songs from the show, doing brand new original compositions from the show. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it. Fine! <laughs> if you know the words, sing along. knowledge and see what you've learned so far. What color are the unicorns? Hey! Purple. Where are they dancing? Rainbow! Please use one word to describe the texture of their magical fur. Anybody know Pony Phonic? A few people. Um, Pony Phonic actually went 
um, pretty much orchestral to the point of his music makes me want Lion King on Broadway done as an MLP show. <laughs> okay. And we're gonna pull up his original uh, first song, if you can find it. It's on the internet, it must be there. <laughs> Everything's on the internet. Let me make sure I have connectivity. Hang on, folks. Dusty can keep you entertained. I'm trying to keep you entertained. But anyway, um, everything from you know hip hop and wubs to I mean, we have Mike the microphone doing you know, blah, 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 blah. yeah, doing uh, rap to acoustic brony doing singer songwriters of the '70s, right. Tarby doing hard rock, prog rock, if you want to call it that, yeah, and hard rock. Um, and a lot of other people doing metal. I mean, how many... Tombstone. The Tombstone, Living Tombstone, who's doing what Living Tombstone does. You can't actually, you know, Classified. you can't even put him in a category. It's a category all his own. Replacer. Replacer. You know, there's tons of music out there that I have not seen come through the furry fandom. We have, um, we had, back in the early days, we had a lot of filk back in the day. Uh, one gentleman back there who was big in the filk back in the day. Um, that I was actually part of, uh, but yes, uh, that we just don't have in the furry fandom, which I'd like to see more of. I, I think it's mostly because everybody had their own individual character, and trying to write a song about your individual character instead of, you know, a show which has a lot of theme to it that you can write music to, um, is just a little different of, of a thing. So, Brony has all the different stuff from art to fursuits to buttons to t-shirts to everything else that, and the original characters like Fluffle, um, but we just haven't seen all that kind of music. Have you found it? Yeah, Lull Lullaby for a Princess. Don't forget Pony Creator, too. And I think the, the Pony Creator um, program was basically made the OC explosion as it was. We have good ones and, and weird ones, but it was one of the tools that basically gave everybody the opportunity to say, hey, I could be a pony. And it's easy to design now, and then I do that, and then I've got something for an artist to actually draw. Did you get it? Starting to? <laughs> Sorry, folks, I had stuff queued up. Uh, I wasn't expecting to do much. Time. Oh, come on. Internet's broken. Internet's broke. <laughs> come back later. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now we're coming Says you came to the end of the internet. <laughs> Turn around. Turn back. Turn back. Turn back. While we're waiting for this to queue up, does anybody have any questions? Yes. That one. Okay. So the show that you do that's like going to be more episodes. Yes. Is it a appropriate for younger? Yes, I keep it appropriate for younger audiences because this happened to me. I went to BronyCon, New Jersey when it moved from New York to New Jersey. And first Brony Con I ever went to, I mean, first con outside of Furry I ever went to. And I had absolutely no idea my reach, none. I was going there as a fan only. And when I showed up, I was accosted <laughs> for pictures and, and autographs and all of this stuff. And I'm just walking around trying to, you know, buy stuff and see friends that I had on the internet who I hadn't seen. And on Sunday, I'm talking to a couple of people on one side of the hall, and I hear these two little girls, Dusty Dad, and come running across the hall. And two girls grab my legs. I mean, they couldn't have been more than eight, right? And they're hugging my legs, and I'm going, <laughs> parents, oh my god. And here comes mom and dad, and dad's got the video cam quarter going, and, and big smiles on their faces, so I kneel down and say hi to them, and I sign their badges, and all that kind of stuff. And, and his, her dad says, you're awesome. We watch your show every week. It used to be a weekly show. And I went, oh, crap. <laughs> okay. Um, wake up call that your reach is farther than you think. And keep it clean and keep it funny and keep it to a family PG. In fact, if, if a guest ever accidentally swears, I actually edit it out and put it, buy some apples. <laughs> yeah, so we do we do a lot of buy some apples around here. In fact, the, the, I think the last month we, me and Screwball have been going back and forth with a and and, and then I edit I edit Fluffle Puff into the into the YouTube upload 
In fact, I had her flying on balloons once. <laughs> Just, and I actually got permission from Mixmaster Mike to, to actually go ahead and do it, because he, he loves the show too. So it's, I, I've been trying to get Mixmaster Mike on the show. He's deathly, deathly shy. He does this, but he is deathly shy. So I've been trying and trying and trying to get him on the show. So, next. Um, when, when you told your story about discovering the show, mm -hmm. It paralleled mine really closely. I was in the middle of a divorce, I was horribly unemployed, I was clinically depressed. And suddenly rainbow. Suddenly rainbow. The time of it, right after this yeah. catastrophic economic mm -hmm. collapse that screwed up so many people's lives. I want to ask the room, how many people were at their lowest ebb ever when they discovered this show? <laughs> a, a, a good, a good number of people. Yes, a good number of people. I mean, if, if they could, if they could take this show, grind it down into a paste, and make it into a pill, we would, we would take depression out of everywhere in the world. Yes, it would, it would have to be a rainbow. It would have to be a rainbow pill. It would have to be a rainbow colored pill, wouldn't it? Or a cupcake. Or a cupcake in cupcake form, or or a muffin, or, a muffin. or it would have to be like. Jelly bellies, you know, or yes, you know, gum, gum, like gummy, that. gummy horses, gummy ponies, gummy ponies, yes. gummy ponies vitamins. That's what I want. Take your ponies. <laughs> no, gummy ponies like gummy bears. You know, gummy bear vitamins for adults. I want gummy ponies. There you go. Alligator gummy. There you go. Actually, I, I have a quick question for a uh, quick question for some of our panelists who haven't been able to do too much talking. Uh, Simon and Sophie, uh, why don't you tell us? What are your favorite uh, fan works? Oh, that's a tough one for me. Um, I'm a fan more of the music side of things. I have a Skype. <laughs> it's not me. I didn't log in. You got mail. You have mail. You have no mail. No one loves you. Um, no, I, I'm. I, Having been in furry fandom, the art doesn't appeal to me as much, uh, mostly because I guess I produce some artwork. Um, doesn't mean I don't appreciate it, but it doesn't. It's not something that grabs me. I'm more a fan of the music. Um, there have been a couple of pieces that have been very personal to me. That um, I, you know, uh, Forest Rains. Um, it's great to be different. Is one of them. I think anyone and everyone should listen to that song at least once because I think everyone can benefit from it. Sure, Rama would like to share a story about that song. Let's find out what he has to say here. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> um, so I actually, I'm, I'm very close friends with Forest Rain. Um, and at Cantalock Gardens, I don't know if any of you ever heard of that con, but it, it took place um, in Ohio uh, last two years ago. And Forest Rain was actually going to premiere. Oh, um, yes. It's great to be different yes. um, at Kellogg Gardens. But there is a different. There's a little subtle element to it. Um, at the Brony Con that took place that last year um, over in New York, he had met this uh, this girl, and um, this uh, this girl um, had come by his table because he had a vendor table, and he left a note, just a five by three yeah. note, yeah. on the table that read, "It's great to be different." That note. And ended up inspiring him to write that song. And then at Candlelock Gardens. He's framed that note. He has framed that note, yeah. yeah. At Candlelock Gardens, he ended up performing it. And they ended up, well, let's just say, they ended up getting together as a result. So Aww. it was a really kind of romantic story that uh, yeah, emerged from that, that song. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just another example. Why? Damn it! Stop it! <laughs> it's just another example of the way that this, yeah. that this fandom just brings people together. How about you, Simon? <laughs> I can't honestly say. this. I can't honestly say that I have one favorite piece. Um, no, I really don't. I, I like a lot of it. Um, the art coming from the furry world. Uh, I like the art, obviously, because I like furry art. There's a lot of cross pollinization there. The, but the thing I'm going to echo is what Dusty was saying, is that with furry, we had a lot of pretty pictures, 
but not a lot of videos, not a lot of music, or anything like that. Now, I can pop up on YouTube, if I can get really incredibly decent, uh, well done music and videos that fans have done. We even have some videos out that people have done that would rival the actual cartoon show. Mm -hmm. A couple of them I looked at and wasn't overly convinced it was fan done. I figured somebody had to have helped them along, apparently they didn't. So the, the creative talents that have drifted over and blossomed with this has been absolutely <coughs> phenomenal. So that is kind of why I, I have a hard time picking any one thing. Yes? Um, hey, Dan. I just wanted to make a point about <laughs> one of the things that's unique about Brony to me, uh, or illustrates it, um, that came out and within, I think, like 18 hours, somebody had a Flutterbat plushie on eBay for sale. Yeah, exactly. And a good one. That is, yeah. yeah, and a good one. That is a unique fandom. I mean, I've known a lot of creative people, and they'll get you their interesting projects sometime in the next decade. Brody, people want to do things. It's time. <laughs> yeah, some of the things like I, I spotted a Trixie outfit out here. You know, I mean, come on. How, how many people have seen that your own furry OC might have a costume? It might be really cool, but it's yours. Here, I knew exactly what that was the minute I saw it. You know, yeah. hey, Trixie, hot dog. <laughs> and and the, the, the breadth of different things. There's a guy I know who's a friend of mine, Silver Slinger. I'm not sure anybody knows him or his stuff, but he is a jeweler for a living. He has, his dad owns a jewelry store. He's been a jeweler all his life. So what did he do? He started making high-end jewelry to the point of VAs and people at the hub wanted them. He actually made, uh, he made uh, Princess Celestia's crown. He made this. He made... Um, Sombra's crown. He's made, he, he does these dog, beautiful dog tags. In fact, yeah, everybody's got one. There you go. I, I left mine at home. I have four of them. But yeah. I don't have one of these because these are what? Oh, these are con, con only. I got to be on staff. You want those? <sighs> don't ask me yet. But anyway, I'm special. I might get one. The, um, but anyway, he does these kind of things for charity. For my, he just continuously says, Dusty, what can I do for you? I, you have these charities, what can I make for you? I'm going, dude, you've given me so much already. You know, he says, I don't care. Whatever you need, whatever you want. So that kind of person who can put, you know, sheet brass together and make it into a beautiful ring. He did, he did rings of all of, the, all of the girls, all of the elements of harmony. He made rings, jeweled rings, really beautiful stuff. So if you check out Etsy, look for Silver Slinger, and you can see a lot of his stuff. Um, it's just different, different things. I mean, um, have you got that thing working yet? No? Anybody else with a question? You. Anybody else with a Wi-Fi? Oh, I just wanted to say something about, um, I got to try that too. Um, as a parent of a special needs child, mm -hmm. how much I appreciate your Alex. Yes. And if you haven't seen yesterday's episode, if you have not seen yesterday's episode, you will be very, you will be very surprised. You will be very surprised in yesterday's episode. So go home and watch it. There's a little bit of a surprise. Megan McCarthy tipped us off. But uh, yeah, and on top of that, she's back to stay. And I got that on good authority from people at the hub. <laughs> they, they seem to have figured out that just because of what she just said, that this pony needs to stay in the show. I'll, I'll pull the, uh, You're gonna get, I'm already high enough, and you want to give me sugar? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> While we're waiting for the internet, I will pull the uh, panel. Uh, did any of you have any favorites from the comics? Themes, characters? Nightmare Rarity. Nightmare Rarity. Well, obviously, I need to actually open up the comics I have at home and read them. Um, I want to speak. Woo! We're back up! Yay! 
Okay. So anyway, this is the second song. Pony Phonic did the, a song for Luna, and this was the Princess Celestia's response to having to send her sister to the moon. This is gorgeous. Listen. DJ. Where's the pony? It's not working again. Oh. Ah! Oh. Where's the pony? Oh. It's only like one oh. so Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. 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 I can see everyone out there turning on their hot spots. Listen, um, oh god, I'm going to try to have it. As a audio file. Don't inhale, Pixie. You're not doing it right. Ah! There you go. No. Okay, so as long as you're being technically challenged, any other questions? All right, let's try this again. This time, let's hand the mic back to to Dusty again and, and hope it doesn't stop working. <laughs> Oh, okay, as I'm going to tell you, Pony Phonic has two songs. He did the one for Luna, and this was the response by Princess Celestia. Thank you. 
I mean, come on. I mean, that that is Broadway, is it not? Yes, it is. I mean, and that's just, that's just one example of a lot of the creativity that's on display. There we go. Uh, that's, that's just one example, though. It's not all necessarily very serious. I mean, it is, after all, a show about candy-colored ponies. So let me show you a brief clip of animation. This is fan animation. Fan-made, using the same technology that the show uses, Adobe Flash. And by the by, the fine people at Adobe look at the stuff that DHX does with their program and goes, huh? <laughs> Wait, it does that? How would you do that? <laughs> you actually got it right? <laughs> oh, yes. So th I'm not going to show you the whole thing, uh, but this is a, a small portion about two of the background characters, a very popular pairing, Octavia, who is a classical musician and very posh, and DJ Pwn3, dropper of all bass in Ponyville, and oddly enough, they're roommates, so needless to say, some odd couple shenanigans ensue, but uh, this is the kind of stuff that, again, just fans throw together. Oh, uh, I should probably give it sound, well, shouldn't I? <laughs> staring at us. <laughs> <laughs> Judging you. Do you listen to your classical music today? Well, yes, we do share our differences, but vinyl usually means well. There was that one time when she saved Ponyville from certain destruction. <laughs> I'm so happy I decided to come back and take over again. Oh, this is far easier than I ever expected it would be. Hold on. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, every pony, take a seat. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and what, pray tell, is that? Oh, it's nothing special. It's just my base cannon! <laughs> so awesome! <laughs> Even though we have our differences, Octavia is still one of my best friends. She's one of the most generous ponies I know and always helps me out in the jam. Hey, do you want the rest of the sandwich? <gasps> <laughs> she really taught me what friendship could mean that day. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> gotten to the point where, for example, voice actors who take part in fan animations have become very popular, like uh, Rena Chan or No Acking, who actually is now the semi-canonical voice of DJ Phone 3. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. Sophie? Um, I wanted to speak a little bit to a common thread between all the things we've talked about. Um, it's an element of the show that is actually not an element of harmony, and that is the element of inspiration. The show tends to... It was supposed to be an element of harmony. Yeah, that's true, it was. They had to change it. Yes. Um, they, the show, by its nature, seems to bring out the best in people, and seems to inspire people to do more. And that, to me, is probably the most magical thing. If, if I may be so bold to say that it is magical. Think about the show. Um, huh. Here's a fan of Queen. It's a kind of magic. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I couldn't help myself. It is a kind. It is a kind of magic. So, uh, Sonia, Comrade Sonia, how much time do we have left? We have another 10 minutes, and I'd like to get some questions from the audience, if we may. Uh, you can get your hand up, sir. I have a question. Do you think inspiration might be uh, Golden Gates' element for the cartoon? Ah, he, he's asking if uh, inspiration is the element of, of the, uh, the uh, original character that we created uh, to serve as the mascot for our convention. Uh, you can see her up there. Her name is Golden Gates. 
Uh, and he's asking if, oh, I did hit the wrong button because I'm an idiot. Wrong button to Ah, the demo gods hate me. Um, and no, I, I don't think inspiration would be it. If I had to pick an element of harmony for, uh, for Golden Gates. <laughs> Are you insinuating something? I actually, actually, I it, it, it's funny you should say that. I would say that it is the element of diversity. There you go. You. Actually, uh, more of a story, but I think you'll appreciate it. Um, Tony Phonics' um, first song was Moon Rising, was it not? Um, yes. Okay. Well, I went to a, uh, a karaoke event uh, in my uh, town I'm living in right now, being run by a friend of mine. It was family friendly. Uh, while I was there, uh, these two little girls, about 10 to 11 years old, uh, go up to the organizer and say that they want to do a, uh, a song for My Little Pony. I hear them say that and think, oh, okay, they're probably going to perform a theme. No, they performed an acapella version of The Moon Rises to everybody there. Yes. I actually sang that song at, uh, at uh, Sacramento. And if anybody likes to sing, look up My Little Karaoke. Okay? Yeah. Because if you have the Sing Star game, anybody know who this, what the Sing Star game is? Okay, I have it. It, it was kind of unpopular, but it was kind of fun. They, the people who run this took that game engine and put all the My Little Pony songs in it on top of a lot of the fan songs like Moon Rises and Discord and all of those songs. So it's called My Little Karaoke. You can download it and play it on your uh, computers as long as you have the SingStar microphones. I think almost any microphone now. Um, but check out My Little Karaoke if you like singing because it's a lot of fun. That's pretty what? remarkable that the... Uh that, uh, you know, the music being produced by the fandom is not yep. only reaching, you know, the yep. uh, Brony fandom, but also... It, it's reaching the original intended fans. Yeah. It is, and there's even more. I mean, uh, that's another aspect of the Brony fandom and their creativity. Uh, there are a lot of video games out there. Uh, I want to give a big plug to uh, the folks at Legends of Equestria, who are doing the first My Little Pony MMO. Yeah, it's yeah. still it's still in development. They have, I got the chance to play it uh, during an open server weekend last year, and I have to say there's a, a lot of fun to be had roaming around Equestria via a phony. It's great. Uh, <laughs> CJ, you have a question. Is it going to be a free MMO? It will be free. Yes! yes! Oh, oh. Yeah. Do we have clearance from Hasbro for this, or are we going to have another fighting event? Yeah. We, oh, yeah. That, that's, uh, for, for those not in the know, uh, there, there was a, a fighting game in development called My Little Pony Fighting is Magic, which started getting a lot of great attention because, honestly, it was turning into a fantastic game. Uh, but once it got excessively hyped at, I think it was E3, was it? E, no, it was E3, yeah. Evo. Evo, Evo. 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 Yeah, uh, Hasbro decided, I guess, that uh, it had gotten too much notice, was infringing, uh, next thing you know, they're cease and desisted, but get this. And this is the cool part. Mm -hmm. So this goes down, we think that's the last we've seen of these guys. Uh, no. Lauren Faust joins their development team and decides to create new characters for them so that they can still put out their game. Yep. And it's, the thing about fighting is magic is that if you dig enough on the internet, you can find it. It's it, true. There have been it's, leaks. It's been leaked a number of times, and some people have actually finished it or gotten dang, dang as close as they can. So if you go digging on the internet, you can find the game and download it. Not that we would advise. Not that we would advise that. Infringing activity on the internet. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. You sir. And to add on to that, as proof, if you uh, actually track down the correct site, they've actually been releasing some of the um, sketches, I believe, that Lauren Foster. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That yes. Thing. If you go to the Fighting is Magic site, they uh, changed actually, the name of it. It's Main Six. It's Main Six. Main Six now. If you go to Main Six, there are some sketches that Lauren has done of, the new, of at least one new character. Yeah, so far. So, about the music, um, I, this is not the first time I heard the lullaby. In fact, this is the third time I heard it. First two times I heard it, I was listening to Calling for Radio. Um, and they were playing it on there. Mm -hmm. And I also heard it at Furry Bowling. Nice. Um, and so I, I, I thought it was cool, but I never actually hear the title for it. I just love this song. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's that when the first one came out, Moon Rises, it's even more epic. It, it was 
the best, it was the most epic song that had been put out at the time. I mean, it was just basically you shut your eyes and you're in the, you're in the song, mm -hmm. listening to it. The orchestration is beautiful, the singing is awesome, and basically you shut your eyes going, I want this on Broadway and I want it now. Yes. Yeah. If you can do that with Lion King, you can do that with this. And, and you know, uh, the, the Bernie community has launched a number of musicians and other creative artists who are now taking their work beyond simply working with ponies and are actually building, uh, you know, careers out of this. Uh, a lovely fellow uh, living all the way out in Israel. Ish. Yeah, some of you know who I'm talking about. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> and <laughs> he was this shy guy doing amazing music. Suddenly he gets known as he goes by the Living Tombstone. He shows up out at BronyCon, uh, I think it was 2012, was it? Yep. Rocks the house. He's now one of the very best known musicians in the fandom, and he's moving on. He's, he's making some success. So that's the thing. It's it's transforming lives in a million ways. It's causing an outpouring of creativity. It's causing people to see that they can create and be and have it well received and therefore keep doing it. It's causing people to see that they can give to their fellow human. And it's also allowing us to see that fursuiting as a pony is Fabulous. <laughs> there are some great cosplayers and fursuiters out there. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> and by the way, I want to thank I want to thank Quinton, aka Cyclone, for helping us out by capering about and generally being totally adorable. <laughs> yeah. So, so we we've, we've only got about three minutes. I've got to wrap it up. Uh, oh, Simon, you got some? Okay, we, uh, we'll take one more question. What's your general thoughts on some of the options that the fandom like the art of Equestria? Okay, uh, the question was, what uh, do we all think about uh, some, some uh, ancillary parts of the fandom? Like, uh, there's a very, very well-known fanfic called uh, Fallout Equestria, which has become of epic length of Joycean proportions. Uh, and I just have to say that that work, uh, among many others, Again, it's just proof that you can take uh, something seemingly so simple, but yet so profound, and create something amazing. Uh, all that's left for me to do at this point, oh wait, hang on, one more, one more. You're... I just want you to shout out the scribbler for reading all the fanfics that's coming out on YouTube. They're really, it's really awesome that she's actually getting people's work actually willingly for free, so to have a site to read or read their works. Um, yeah. So at this point, it remains for me to do two things. First off, I have to thank all of my other panelists, Simon Wolf, the inimitable Dusty Cat, the generous Rommel Pants, the fabulous Sophiane Ardinger, the amazing Quentin Fox, I, your humble host, Sonia Lynn. And I do have to do one other thing, one other piece of business, because I have to. Bay Area Brony Spectacular, folks, if you've inspired you at all to take part in this, in this fandom, uh, again, because of the help of Anthro Arts, who have been great to us, we've been able to launch, and we will be happening April 18th through 20th. There's a shirt. Yes, there's a shirt. Come over here, come over here. Um, well, just stand there for a second. Come, 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 come. Closer, 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 closer. Don't be shy. Prepare to have your 10 face seconds the, uh, of fame. Face the crowd. Just, just do, do the male model thing, sir. Do the male Oh, yes. Now give us some coy. You're an animal. You're an animal, baby. You're an animal. We're all animals here, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, like I said, April 14th, April 14th through 18th at the SFO Hyatt Regency. Um, you can register here on site and get a spe come back up here, you're not done with you. <laughs> Any attendee of Further Confusion gets 10% off and the fabulous t-shirt, which would cost you 20 bucks at con. So just come see us at the... No, the badges are not included. So come see us at the fan table. We do still need volunteers. Please come help me. My head of ops is, 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 is in need of help. My head of business, we all, I mean, we have some great, great staff. We're doing some great, great work, but you know, it's getting down to boots on the ground time. And our next in-person meeting is going to be February the 2nd, that's a Sunday. 
uh, at the SFO Hyatt Regency. I'll be posting all kinds of information about it. Um, we'd love to see you there. We'd love to see you at Con. And I thank you all very, very much for coming and gracing us with your company today at this panel. Hang on, hang on. We're gonna do one last thing. One last thing. I promise it'll be quick. It's, it's worth it. It is worth it. It's worth it. And if they need, are we, are we being chased? Are we being chased out of the room? No. No. Okay. All right. Let's just do. One final thing. No. Oh. Is that it? What did you do with it? There it is. Uh, oh, ah, yes. yes. So, we mentioned his name earlier, Forrest Rain, but he um, got together with 150 different people to basically put together a choir-esque version of the Massive Smile Project. And a quick note, this animation and song was a key part of our Seed of Kindness campaign that helped raise 60,000 euros to fully fund an orphanage in Clinic of Uganda. Also, this is another audience participation piece because you all, if you're all fans of the show, you know the song. You better sing along. Or Here we else. go.
Thank you.